to order at uh, for 405. And can you um roll call? Can you roll call Okay, Greg is absent. Maggie? Here. Rosemary? Here. Dan? Here. And Michael? Thank you, Sophie. So can you please join me in Sylvia and our flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Discretion of the president. Comments of public will be accepted during the public comment portion of the agenda only. No action or comments will be taken by the board on matters not on the agenda. 
Hello everyone, my name is Alejandra Gutierrez. I've been known actually more for Ellie around here. I've been here for the past um, 28 years and um, just want to say that, uh, just want to tell the district thank you for these um, 28 years that I have the opportunity to give to my community. And this is actually, I want to let you guys know that um, my last day is April 7th. Um, I'm no longer going to work here. Um, the, I'm sorry. The reason, um, some points that took me to this, to this tragedy, I, was, I don't think I was able to get to this point. But I had an incident with Ida um, in the lab. She was triggering, I mean, a, giving a, a, a little round to somebody when one of our, the blood carrier that carries the blood um, to, uh, was there with me and he mentioned to Ida, oh, you have such a work, hardworking uh, employer here. I think she deserves a raise. And thank, I, I thank her for acknowledging me. Um, but I didn't like Ida's answer. Um, Ida told her, well, next time you come, bring your check so you can give me, uh, so we can give her the raise. I'm sorry, but that's unprofessional. I mean, you don't have to have so many degrees for not to talk to that person. I, sh I she could have at least turned around and say, you know what, thank you. I appreciate that evaluations are coming up. I could look into that. I've been working here 28 years. I've never gone into my boss's um, office to offer a raise. I've been here, I work, I work hard. <laughs> Never. You guys might think I'm crying, but it is hard to leave this place. <laughs> I don't know how the other co-workers feel, but I'm devastated. Because <laughs> there's no need. We don't need a bachelor's, we don't need a degree to act like human beings. We do not need we work ourselves. Also, sometimes she tells the girls she has said it. You guys want to get paid more and you guys need to go back to school. I understand. Maybe she had the opportunity to go to school. She doesn't know how many of us cannot go all the way to college. I'm trying my best to get my kids into college, get them graduated. But the reason I'm here is because I don't want to leave without having my other co-workers feel the way I feel. I just want to let you guys know how I feel. And that there's no need for it. And you know me for many years. You know, there's a lot of people that know me. This from Ali's family knows me for many years. And believe me, if I earn what I have right now, it's not a lot. Yeah, I probably deserve a little bit more. But I never thought I had to get to this point where I have to be humiliated by telling me that I need to get somebody else's paycheck to give me a raise. Okay? Just want to let you guys know that. Thank you. Hi, Adrian Romelli. I was here at the last board meeting. I know many of you know me and my family, and I think, um, don't know if you know or not, but my mother passed away. And, uh, it's very difficult to be here because when Lizetta and I and Dave leave right after this presentation, um, we're going to my mother's grocery. And uh, I'm here because my mother was a brave woman and I'm here representing her because my mother would want me to tell you that this place has to change. My mother loved Eden Valley, but she did not love living here anymore. Too many things happened. And I have a document that I would give to each of you that speaks to deficiencies in medical care and lack of compassion. And it's incredibly interesting what the prior woman said, because I have heard from staff members who have worked here for years and years who shared with me during the most difficult times of their work how they are not getting paid like other people who are coming here. There are some inequities that are occurring that are terrible to your staff who's worked here a long time. I know of one staff member who made a 
decision to resign, but was offered a salary that matched where he was going to go. And he felt insulted that he was offered it after being here for so many years. And he left. Good for him. There are so many workers that were here that loved Eden Valley that now are working somewhere else. And good for those nursing homes in this valley because they got the best of the best. You failed to keep the best of the best. And that turnaround happened when Ida Chan started. That's where we saw all of this happening. But at the end of the day, I can't accept responsibility in solo because you as board members are ultimately responsible for what happens at Eden Valley. You had Steve Pruitt, who was really good, and I think he got away with that as board members because he knew what he was doing. So I strongly suggest you find someone who knows health care and you let them guide all of you, including Ida. Eden Valley can get back to where it needs to be. I have faith in that. It was for this community. I had both parents here. Both died from being at Eden Valley. I know I only have three minutes, but I have, I will pass this on, and I want you to particularly pay attention to the lack of compassion that it occurred on the day we brought my mother home when we had less than an hour to remove her entire belongings that Ida says is a home. So less than an hour, we had to vacate my mother's belongings as we were dealing with the care of my mother. How insulting to my mom and how damaging to our emotional health. And then I was blamed by your head nurse for taking the medication and blamed that I didn't give a three-day notice. I didn't know you had to give a three-day notice to someone who's going on to hospice care. We were emotionally damaged by all of you at this table. And I want you to hang on to that. And please, I have one more request. Do not attend my mother's services. Thank you. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Junior Nuno, and uh, I'm a long time resident here. I'm a uh, former city council member in King City, and uh, what I see is going on right here is exactly what we dealt with. And um, I I'm a little confused and a little disappointed. Actually, a little confused and a lot disappointed. That first, we're, you're having a meeting in, in here where you're exposing a lot of patients and there's patients outside so one is like, I think you need to all rethink this this is not the appropriate place to hold this because if people want to come outside one is if they're thinking about should I or should I not go into a clinic that's one they're, you're, 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 you're holding them back from doing that the other thing is um, I couldn't find the agenda I couldn't find the minutes so I don't know what you guys are approved on the minutes Okay, me as a city council member of Downey King City, I have the agenda, I have the minutes. Even if I force myself in there to get it, I can't find anything. Um, I can't find your guys' last two years budget that was approved. I can't find your last two years actual budget that was made, uh, the actuals. Um, I'm totally confused. And if this needs to be public, it's not. Um, the attorneys on, uh, online, she knows where this is heading, and this is very troubling for you guys. And uh, again, long term, long, long time residents here, I am very disappointed. I've seen this place built, and what I'm hearing now, I am totally disappointed. And you guys either need to resign and get new people in here, or good people in here, to run this place. Because this is not acceptable, not for me, not for anybody else, and especially for all those patients out there waiting. That's all I have to say. And, and, I, and I am going to request that, uh, where do I start uh, getting the last two years budget? 
the last two years actual budget, the last two years actual expenditures, uh, where do I start? Who, who do I talk to? And then what's the next budget? What's the, what's the next year's budget you guys are, are talking about? Um, I hear it was supposed to be in September. I have yet to see anything. So I'm either totally lost or I don't know where I'm looking for or somebody please guide me. Somebody, one of you guys please tell me where to look at this. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am actually here in support of our CEO. I feel like our staff have not been given a fair opportunity to share how we really feel. Um, I am a current employee and I have worked here for about three years, most of with Ida. And I'm very disappointed and saddened to see what has been reported, published, and directed to our CEO. Um, based on information that has been recently published, there's a lot of misinformation and a serious lack of appropriate attempts to work with the district and pro staff progressively. More directly, there was a claim of a hostile work environment here. This has been proven to be false, as there are no valid claims um, of a hostile work environment. Ms. Lopez Chan's ability to run the district has also been questioned due to her lack of experience in healthcare. Well, I've been in healthcare for 15 years, and in my experience, I work for another um, local community healthcare organization. I've had five different CEOs, all of whom come from a business and finance background, <clears throat> and they all thrived in their roles because ultimately, this is a business. And that's what's expected of CEOs to run a business. It's not expected that our CEO performs patient care or makes care-based decisions without consulting with the staff who are in those particular roles designated for to make those decisions. Um, honestly, I am here hoping that we can all just start to work together with staff our board and our community to bring forth solutions and to so that everyone can have a better understanding of what our ch our actual challenges are and help stra help us strategize for the future. Good afternoon everybody. Uh, my name is Maria Coralenco and I have been a long life solitary resident since I was four years old. I actually remember coming here with my mother as a child and also when I had my my children. Um, I actually came here because I was going to be presenting um, Michael Max with his certificate of completion for his 2023 Special District Leadership Academy. Uh, that's an academy and I just wanted to uh, give him kudos for taking the initiative to uh, take this class on his own accord, uh, working with governance foundations, setting direction, uh, community leadership, board's role in human resources, and board role for its role in finance and fiscal accountability. Um, however, just sitting here, I'm actually on my way to another meeting and I just wanted to say that I'm very disappointed. I was here, I think, last year when we had, you know, kind of something similar. We had different staff and patients talking on their dissatisfaction. And obviously, I don't know both sides, um, you know, of the story, but what I was going to say is, you know, just as a as a leader, I think it's important even when we hear things that are not we're not in agreement with um, or that we think are not, you know, the facts. I think it's important to sit down and talk and have these conversations. It's been months and, you know, it really broke my heart to see that, uh, that lady earlier crying. Um, also, I was going to say, I, I know as a mom, that's my daughter sitting there. She's a teen and for anyone that has teenagers, it's hard sometimes. We butt heads. Sometimes she, we don't agree on things. Sometimes we talk, we yell. Um, but I let her express herself, and I let her, you know, have that um, that opportunity to be her own person. And so I think it is important to to hear everyone out. I'm gonna repeat the same thing I, I said the last time. Um, you know that I really would like to see a resolution. Our city is growing. We're actually gonna grow 50 percent within the next 20 years. So that's about 10,000 more people. Um, and I know the city's working on their general plan right now and on different um, plans to accommodate that large growth. And as the largest uh, health health district provider in Salt Lake, that it's important. Um, you know, the job you guys have there sitting, you're pretty much in charge of the health care of most of the people here, and I'm sure South County as well. You have your families, you have the Women's Health Center, and then you have our seniors. 
So that's a big, big responsibility on your shoulders. And, you know, I just, you know, please, that you guys please do the right thing, I think. At this point, I would suggest meeting with the staff, you know, talking to them, being transparent. It seems like there's um, a lack of, um, a lack of trust. And I think that's, as leaders, it's our responsibility, just like it is as parents, in my example, to build that trust. Thank you. Hello, uh, Wes White. Um, John Doe, 13K Productions, doing the video right now. Um, trying to, I mean, I've been doing anything up from positive civic, social, environmental justice oriented. And part of that is public meetings. Um, I've been to very many districts and I've kind of, I mean, at one point I was charging for what's being billed $85, $85 an hour for tech for doing these videos. That's how much she wanted to charge for a CD for the parents of Oasis Charter School. So, I mean, special districts, I mean, it, like she just said, it's about accountability, transparency, you know, and working together, it's a negotiation. Um, there's a lot of interest in, in seeing this place grow and thrive and, and share the love and, and be the love and, you know, also make the money, be the business, make sure, you know, you, you, you at least balance if not come out a little bit ahead. But, you know, I mean, there needs to be the transparency. You have Zoom available. It, it's very easy to, to record it. It's very easy to share it. I go away. Maybe it's a little more comfortable that way. Maybe it can be more intimate for everybody here. But, you know, I'm telling you, I, I've got over like 200 views of a meeting right now. And so there's a lot of interest, and, and it's just not fair to make me have to do it instead of just do it yourself and share it, you know? Um, because it's, it's just information and, you know, people make mistakes or whatever, we, we can always improve, we can do better. And, you know, it's, it's about moving forward, it's about, you know, improving the lives of, of your patients, you know? So, I mean, I, I just want to see it shared. That's, that's all it's about. I mean, I'll keep coming back if I have to until you do. I'd love to see it as an agenda item. Please make it an agenda item or just do it administratively. I think it's that easy, you just decide. I'll just use you. Please do that. Okay. To, answer, to answer Maria's, thank you, Maria. I also, Huey, I, I can't have public comment. Out of order, out of order. You can't answer to public comment. I, I, okay, then I'd like to make a public comment. Maria made a presentation to me. Thank you. I can't answer that. I can't take action. I actually received an additional certificate. I want to get into the minutes. The Special Leadership Foundation told me they were coming to a meeting today to give me a certificate of special district governance. I took the academy and I did 20 hours on top of the 10 hours required of continuing training and, and education to receive a certificate of special district governance. And they were supposed to come and make this presentation today, but they called me and said they couldn't make it. Obviously, they didn't contact you, so you weren't expecting me on the agenda. So here's a copy I'll pass over of the certificate and the information about how basically it started in 1999 and it's designed to be uh, to educate board members on how the district is supposed to work and how our finances work, and I took 40 hours worth of training to learn these things. Thank you. Thank you. So moving right along, uh, communications coordinator, Jamie Gumbo. Yeah, so I have a few items I would like to discuss in the communications report. So currently assisting, continuing to assist HR for tabling events and getting them supplies. Um, we did have an opportunity that took place the Tuesday this past week um, over at the middle school. And we made a presentation for middle schoolers that were interested in careers in healthcare. And what I did was supply them with pencils and these little squishy toys that kids love these days. And I'm always wanting to stay on top of supplies that have our logo on them and all of that. Um, a job fair is also taking place on April, on April 12th that we might also participate in. So these are all different opportunities that we have to prepare for, just so that way we can recruit staff and just be involved in our community. Um, also preparing gift bags with district marketing materials for a tour to take place on April 21st. These items are good to give away because it does show that we want visitors to remember us whenever they come to visit. They're leaving with something that has our name on it, our logo, and it just gives them something to remember us by. And we, it also shows that we care about forming relationships with them. 
So I'm now also having one-on-ones with our marketing consultant, Esmeralda Montenegro. So she's our marketing consultant and we're meeting just for professional development since I am the first one to step into this new role that was created for the district. There's still so much to learn and tackle and she's the professional as far as marketing, advertising, communications go. So it's really good to have her as a resource and I've leaned on her since day one I've been working here. So it's really good to progress in this role and see where it could possibly go in the future. Um, we're also working on a new revamped brochure for Eden Valley Care Center and I did leave the sample in my office but I can go ahead and email it to all of you or anyone who would like to see because the last one was pretty outdated. I believe it was over 10 years old. It had old um, pictures and just didn't look so inviting like we want Eden Valley to look like a scene. So we're working on getting those revamped and printed because this is also good printing collateral so that way we can give for tabling events and anytime someone comes to visit Eden Valley, we can also supply them with something that they're able to leave a way to contact us and just also spread the word on how Eden Valley's like, you know, a skilled nursing facility in the South County area. As far as public outreach goes, there's different social media posts that were made on behalf of the district, Eden Valley Care Center, Soledad Medical Clinic, and Women Health Center Facebook pages. So these include um, a baby shower that was thrown for our CNA Lucetto. We just have pictures of us having fun and having a little potluck, her with her baby shower gifts and the cake and all of that. Just, she's worked with us for so long and we always want to you know, congratulate them on big milestones like that. So that was posted to Eden Valley's Facebook page. We also promoted our video that was made for our 75th anniversary celebration event that took place at the Soledad Historical Society that was made by our marketing consultant. And she did a really good job with that. I believe it was shown at our last board meeting, so that went onto our Facebook page, and we're also trying to get that onto our website. Um, our maintenance team also helped the Soledad Rotary Club with their reverse draw events, so we wanted to show that we're there helping our community and other organizations that are here in Soledad. Um, we also have promoted cooking demonstrations that are hosted by our registered dietitian, Julia. She has them every Tuesday at the high school, so I wanted to let the community know that that's a really good event to partake in. And she cares about the nutritional needs of Soledad and our local communities, so it's really good that she continues to host those. Does she, does she ever host those in-house here? Oh, not because of COVID, huh? No, the space. So there's over 30 community members that attend those. Mm -hmm. And so that was the appropriate space. So the high school was gracious enough to lend us their mission room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's where they take place at the Oh, Tuesday. I see. Uh -huh. they, they did it years ago, mm -hmm. and you'd walk in, and it smelled so good. <laughs> it does still. Yeah, they're baking bread or something like that. But they don't, host, they don't have them post it here. No, and, then, and what she's utilizing are those boxes that we're giving away to the community members, those complete meal boxes. They come with all the protein, all the food. She's showing them how to cook what's in the boxes. Mm -hmm. I would think that maybe some of the residents might enjoy you know, some of the yeah. We'll have to look into bringing those back. Yeah. 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 Also, activities taking place at Eden Valley Care Center. Um, residents that were playing games like Bingo and Hangman were posted to Eden Valley's Facebook page. Lucy Pritt being recognized as our Soledad Medical Clinic Employee of the Year. Um, and today is actually National Doctors Day, and that was publicized both online on our Facebook page, but also through Constant Contact, and that's our um, email blast platform. So there, that was promoted, and we also did our fundraiser that takes place for the foundation that was promoted via email blast, but right now I'm working on a monthly newsletter that goes out to district employees, and that will go out tomorrow. So it goes out monthly. I have another question. So today's National Doctors Day, mm -hmm. did you recognize the doctors within the facility or at the clinic? Yeah, that was And Alicia. what did you do? That was Alicia. Yeah, so, so they manager. did a full spread. They did um, gifts. Everybody got a gift, almost like an Easter basket gift. Um, they got a gift card. Um, and then they got um, breakfast this morning. And then they had lunch this afternoon. So yeah, they were celebrated for all the doctors. For all the doctors, yes. Um, if I may add to Jamie's report, the other thing that she's working on is working on with a couple of our associations, um, Association of California Healthcare Districts and the um, CD uh, Special District Leadership Foundation as well. 
and she's working on getting us a, a certification of our website and transparency. Um, and so far, we are 100% accessible and compliant. And what that's referring to is our contact and general information on file. We have the SB 272 Enterprise Catalog on file. And then we also have um, the board meeting minutes, agendas, and posted in advance uh, based on the government code. Um, in addition to that, we have our board member and staff compensation according to the state controller's web page and financial transaction report. So she has worked on that and she's actually going to work on getting the certification, um, which we should, should um, see here in the next um, month or so as well. And also, um, with our um, uh, marketing consultant, we did a, and everybody has a newspaper in front of you. If you don't, I have, I have a stack right here. Um, this um, a newspaper article of Dr. Esteva. And Dr. Esteva is a graduated from UC, uh, USC School of Medicine and uh, fulfilled her residency there. She has worked for the Natividad Hospital since 2015. So this is our partnership with Natividad Hospital to bring our OBGYN um, to the clinic. Um, she is married and has two young children. And uh, she says, I'm proud to work with Antibida Hospital and partner with SCHCD to provide specialty services to women from rural areas, she said. The people here are wonderful and I'm happy to consistently provide a high level of care. SCHCD is honored to have professionals like Dr. Steva as part of our team, a specialist. She as well as our team of doctors are making a difference in keeping our community healthy and thriving. Um, and that was a comment that I gave. So you're going to start seeing other um, providers that we will um, acknowledge and showcase um, over the course of time. So this is number one of them. So I'll look out for more. I have two questions. One of them, I thought the Women's Health Center was 600B, not 619 Main Street. And this is the address of 619 Main Street. I don't think that existed for us. Right, so that's a type one. It's a correction. We can correct it. Thanks for pointing that out. So. How many days a week is she here? One. Um, so it depends on um, their scheduling, um, and so it varies. Uh, all the doctors vary. It just depends on the scheduling, and, and that's done by our their chief medical doctor, um, Dr. Chandler. Okay, yeah. so she works in collaboration with Dr. Chandler. And, and now an entire group, absolutely, yeah. Yep, yeah. so I just want to share that. Thank you, Jamie. What a half page ads called? Just a good investment or a bad investment? Or investment? I think anything that we can do to promote the organization is a good investment. Absolutely. What does that cost? I don't know that answer, but I can certainly get that for you if you wish. Yeah, absolutely. Looks good. I did see that there was other memorials. Yeah, they're very good at doing that. Yep, they do. Thank you, Jamie. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so we'll move on to uh, code of conduct. Uh, I believe that was uh, on the agenda last month, but we're going to uh, uh, take, a, take a motion today. So everybody have an opportunity to review that. Uh, okay. uh, I make a motion. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I move that we accept the code of conduct. Yes. Yes. Presented. Any seconds? I'll we'll second. Mandy? Yes. Rosemary? Discussion? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Michael? Any discussion? We made a motion approved, but we haven't made any discussion. We have discussion. Sure. Yes. Go ahead, Michael. I just had, I thought that pulled. I already felt question. Um, one is, I, I saw there's some, where did this come from? I know there's a whole bunch of policies out there, and all this is in the law. I was looking for, where this got gen did you get a sample from some place and that's not what, what's or, your question? The code of conduct policy. Did you make this from scratch? Did we get a sample from Special District Association or something to use the reference? I, I was just looking for references. Noel, would you like to support with that question? Yeah, so you know we represent quite a few public agencies and it's a compilation of um, uh, codes that we've used with other clients. Okay. Thank you. Um, there's one point in here that, that I, I agree we shouldn't be texting and stuff, but to say you can't use a device in the meeting I don't think is right. Some boards, they give their agenda on a laptop, and I'd like to be able to look up a reference while we're talking about something to 
tell me I'm making a sin if I pull out my cell phone. I don't think that should be part of a policy, or it doesn't sound like being a forceful thing. That's some of the words you use. You can't bring out a cell phone or a laptop at a meeting because the public might think you're doing something shady, which I don't, I mean, a lot of boards, boards do that. Uh, the other thing is it references that we have to follow our policies, but this is the first policy other than the outdated play handbook we had in a while. So does that mean we're going to start generating some more policies if I can't violate the policies that don't exist? Just a general question. Other than that, that's what I have. Uh, start a motion to roll again. Roll call. No, you can do roll call. Yes, it's all right. Maggie? Yes. Rosemary? Yes. And yes. And Michael? Yes. Thank you. And we'll move on to Treasurer's Report. Uh, Frank Green? Okay. All right, so the month of February, uh, due to the high census in uh, Eden Valley, as well as due to uh, quite a few visits at the Solid Medical Clinic. We actually showed a profit of $383,104 for the month of February. That's wonderful. So um, we don't have, we didn't, as of the end of February, the cash isn't in the account because it's a 30 to 60 day turnover for that money to come in. So we will start to see an increase in our cash account, you know, uh, towards the end of March, begin middle of April or so. So you'll look at uh, on page 12 of our packet. You'll see the balance sheet as of February 28, 2023. Our cash and cash equivalents are 1.3 million. Our receivables are 1.7 million bringing, as well as inventories and prepaid expenses, our current assets to 3,459,000. So 3.5, approximately 3.5 million. Our current liabilities, those liabilities that are expected to be paid in the near future are 2.6. It's always good to have at least a one to two, one to one ratio. A lot of covenants in the bank require two to one. We aren't quite at two to one. Uh, but we are getting much closer than we have been for the last year. And then just pointing out the um, major liabilities is that estimated third party settlements. Correct. Yeah. So if you guys would think about that, if you back that out, that would sit substantially change that liability and reduce it by that amount. Mm -hmm. So just th think about that. Mm -hmm. So And that's a change that we're working on now. Um, and um, pulling that back and really living off our means. Yeah. And um, not having to take that, those um, advancements anymore from Medi-Cal as it was back done in 2015 um, to meet financial needs at that moment. Um, we don't want to do that anymore. We want to utilize the funds that we're producing um, to pay for the bills that we currently have and not utilize um, prepaid monies. All right, so if you go to page 13, you will see the statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in net assets. Uh, for the first time uh, in this fiscal year, remember this is for an eight-month period, July through February. For the first time, our revenues now exceed that of the prior year. So we finally have you know, turned that corner, and we are generating more revenues than we had in the prior year. Is that because of the census? Primarily the census, yeah, that was a big portion of it, and then we also had a, a very good month at the clinic. Um, so it's a couple of things. Um, one is that we've um, hired what's called an MD, MDS coordinator in Eden Valley. What that individual does is that they're responsible for really looking at every single claim that's going through and making sure that we are um, um, getting the most out of every encounter. Um, and one of, the, one of the things that you can think about is uh, Medicare and typical insurances will pay you a set amount of dollars. But we were finding that we were leaving um, um, so much on the table. And so with the new MDS coordinator, they're able to figure that out. And we, um, uh, for example, are getting an additional $300 per encounter. So when you say leaving on the table. Which means is that we had an opportunity to, to um, charge that fee but um, we were not doing it because we were um, not including those codes in appropriately. Can you go back and do that? Um, 
The long, the short answer is yes, the long answer, it depends. It depends because there's only a small window of time where you can do this. Okay. Yeah. Is she going to do that? Um, not at this moment, that's not, that's not a plan, but I mean, that's certainly something that we can take a look at. Um, right now, it's just, we're, we're doing it moving forward. You'll notice our uh, contractual adjustments are down from the prior year as well. So our net revenues are 945,000 higher than the prior fiscal year. Now our other operating revenues are down about 568, but as I have explained in prior meetings, the reason for that is the uh, COVID monies that we were receiving in the prior year that not, are not available in the current year. So uh, operating expenses, we are at 9,517,000 as compared to 8,617,000 the year before. And we'll go through some of the detail in a couple pages on that. But uh, our operating income uh, after depreciation is a loss of 817,000. And then our non-operating revenues are 221, leaving an increase or de a net decrease of 596,000. So, uh, prior month that was you know three hundred eighty three thousand dollars higher, so we have a couple more months like the month of February. We'll be a great people. What does March look like? About the same, if not better. As February. Okay. The census is still up. It's fifty two today. We only have one one bed. How and many how many beds are there? Um, we are um, uh, approved for fifty nine, and so what we will be doing to make room for um, uh, more residents is uh, converting those rooms back to doubles or singles um, and that will allow us some uh, more opportunity um, to have more residents. So right now we're at 52? 52. 52. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're at 99% of our capacity. And 26 um, of those, and Brent would like to hear, hear this, um, 27 of those are Medicare. Okay. Do we have to keep a percentage of them empty for Medicare? Yeah. Okay, and then towards the bottom of the page 13, you will see right above the other items, you'll see a summary of income by operation. Uh, this is the first time that Eden Valley has been positive. So we are now at 155,000 positive uh, for the year. Uh, the Clinic and Women's Health Center is still showing a loss, but is making signs of improvement. Uh, it's at $202,000 loss. And then the district, those are just district-wide expenses that have to be covered by Eden Valley as well as uh, the clinic. Uh, we're showing the expenditures there are 548000 Okay, so that ideally, you know, we would like Eden Valley to be able to cover half of that, so at least two hundred seventy-five. So we're, we're getting close as far as Eden Valley. We still have ways to go for the clinic and the Women's Health Center to break even. Okay. What, what kind of things are you talking about? There are distant expenses that are a lot more than our expenses than, say, the women's clinic or the TV valve. The district wide expenses are for administration uh, expenses that we have personnel that uh, deal with both the clinic as well as Eden Valley. Some of our maintenance salaries are in there, our human resource salaries are in there, um, payroll, those type of things. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, the property taxes are revenues that come in that help offset those expenses. Yes. Okay. If you go to page 14, you'll see a breakdown of our cash, where the cash is residing, and the majority of that is sitting at First Capital Bank. We have 320, uh, 321,000 uh, rounded at Mechanics Bank. Our accounts receivable. This is where the really good news for Eden Valley. You'll see. Accounts receivable at 963,000. The year before, we were at 416,000, and that's because of the census. And that's the money that we have been receiving during the month of March and will receive in the month of April. Okay. Uh, summary of income by month. You'll you'll notice um, you'll notice the 383,000 of profit in February, as composed to prior year a loss of 115,000. It was about this time last year where the census really take, started to take a drop and where we really started to feel the effects of that. So it's a really good positive sign to see that being picked up at this point. 
Well, and we can't forget what happened in the last two years. We have COVID, right. and probably during that time we had COVID in the building. Yeah. And, that was hard. Yeah. Yeah. and then down at the bottom of page 14, uh, your gross revenues by type, you have your clinic salaries at the top, and then you have the bottom four are Eden Valley South, uh, excuse me, not salaries, these are revenues. And then the bottom four are your revenues for uh, Eden Valley. And then the percentages over to the right, uh, you'll notice that in prior months that was uh, the Medicare revenues were around 15 to 20% and we're now up to 29% and as the closer we get to 50, we, we make money. So. And what about uh, the physical therapy? Is that coming in in the Medicare, the Medi-Cal, for the Eden Valley? And that's yeah, the majority, that's, the majority that's of that up. is Medicare. That's picking up with the uh, therapist now. And, and that's what will happen once we convert the um, those rooms back to doubles. Um, that will pick up even further because then you have more opportunity to help and support those that need that care. On page 15, we have a, the summary of Eden Valley. This is for the eight-month period. So uh, the top portion breaks it down by department, the expenditures by department. So you can see the different departments and you can see the variance between the prior year. Um, we are showing, once again, a profit of 155000 at Eden Valley compared to a loss of 12000 the year before. And then on the bottom half of the section, you, the expenditures are broken down by type of expenditures, such as salary, benefits, professional fees, etc. Okay, so that's there for your uh, review. If we go to page 16, you have the clinic and Women's Health Center. And you'll notice that under uh, the expenses, we have professional fees, and uh, one of the board members last month re requested a summary of those professional fees as to the increase. And so on page 17, you will see an outline of those, in, of those expenditures as to where, what those expenditures, uh, those amounts are comprised of, okay? Because that is by far the major increase in expenditures for the Solid Medical Clinic slash Women's Health Center. You'll notice though the bottom line for the clinic as of uh, February 28th, eight month period, is a loss of 202,000. As compared to as com compared to a loss in the prior year of fifty three thousand, and then in the bottom portion of page sixteen, you'll see the income for the month of February. Uh, Eden Valley showed a, a profit without depreciation of three hundred twenty one thousand. The clinic showed a profit of two hundred four thousand, and the district uh, their expenditures were about a hundred thousand. So overall, the net was four twenty five. You subtract the depreciation. And you get to the net profit of three hundred eighty-three thousand. But, but a very good month. Great. What? Um, and the visits up at the clinic? No, they're about average. They're about thirty-three hundred a month. Uh -huh. Yeah. So they that um, it's actually kind of a, been on a little decline, to be honest with you. Would you attribute the, the positive numbers with uh, at the clinic? I would. I get it with Eden Valley, but what yeah. Uh, again, it's we, we hired a new um, um, uh, business office manager who specializes in billing and billing of this type. So it's really keeping an eye on those encounters and making sure that every opportunity that we um, have is, is um, that we're billing appropriately to the best of the extent that we can that's allowable. Um, and so um, that and just, you know, everybody kind of being on the same page and telling the same story across the board, um, that's also made a difference. What about the, the reduction in hours? Yeah, so um, I'm happy to say we are um, nearly all complete. Um, billing, uh, what I mean by that, um, billing will come back to full time in April, and we have less than, less than nine folks, ten folks, um, that still need to come back to full time, but everybody else has come back to full time. Yeah. Yes. So we, we have, you know, probably a less than 10, but I'm waiting to see what um, March brings. Um, so Billing um, just got their notice that they will come back full-time starting April the 1st. Yeah, so we have a few medical assistants I think we have left. We have referrals left. 
but everybody else, we started slowly bringing them back over time. Yeah, so this has been going on for several months. Oh, yeah. Is everybody aware of that? Um, we, we do tell them, um, but um, I mean, we, we do have meetings. Uh, we have meetings all the time, um, and uh, we can certainly tell them again. Are you sharing with them these positive numbers? We did. Oh. Yeah, we did. We had a, a, a team meeting and we shared and, um, with everyone, mm -hmm. letting them know what was going on. I did want to show before Brent went on really quickly. Um, we did get our um, election cost uh, for the 2008 election. Um, when does that come into play? Uh, that was, it's due in April. Um, we received the invoice this month in March on the 15th. And that total cost was for $27,333.50 is what we're going to owe, which is equivalent to registered voters for this election was $8,622. And the cost per registered voter was $3.17. You said for 2008, is that this peak or does it go that far back? November 8, oh, you 2022. Said, I thought you said 20, 2008, sorry. So when that gets that so, expense, what was the number again? Of Absolutely. Voters? So the total amount due is twenty-seven thousand three hundred and thirty-four and fifty cents. And how many voters? Eight thousand six hundred and twenty-two, which was a, a cost per registered voter of three dollars and seventeen cents. So when you do that, what will that that will be a district expense? Yes. Thirty thousand dollars roughly. Due in uh, next month. Okay. And then beginning on page 18 uh, is your, um, I was asked to uh, present the budget summary. And so I have, uh, I believe the budget still needs to go before the, the board for approval. Yeah. So this is for review for this month and uh, we're taking back suggestions and ideas. Uh, but um, here's a one that we are presenting uh, to the board for approval with the uh, plan to present um, one to the board in the next coming month. So this is for you guys to review and if there's any comments and suggestions um, to Brent and I, please let us know and we can try to make those um, accommodations and changes. Uh, but this is for your review at this moment. Okay. And I'm open to any suggestions as to presentation to make it more readable for you. Um, I mean, I know we accountants think differently than a lot of different people. So uh, it's a lot of numbers, but uh, if there's anything I can do to make this more presentable and readable to you, just let me know. Okay. Okay. So the breakdown of the mm -hmm. Yeah, take a look at that and let us know what you guys all think. And uh, we can do that. And uh, we'll bring you back to a vote in the next month. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing that. So the goal is the next month we bring you a vote and have the public meeting because one of the pain in the butt parts about the budget is the code says that the public can ask questions about every line item. And you don't just give them 15 minutes. For three minutes, they can ask questions about everything. So, so um, uh, motion to approve the financial statement. Please um, motion. I move we accept the financial statement as reported. I'll second it. Maggie? Yes. Rosemary? Yes. And Michael? No. Thank you, Mr. Green. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. So we're going into closed session. Uh, next item on the agenda. Um, so we have to excuse everybody. So, so Madam, Madam Chair, can I just interrupt real quick before you go into closed session? Yes. Yes. So just, I'm, I'm going to uh, zoom off the closed session uh, because I'm not needed in that matter. And then, Ida, maybe if you can text me, I'll zoom back in when you come back to open. And then just, I wanted to make sure in case the, any of the public leaves, the gentleman who asked for some budgets, is is he still in the room? Yes. Yes. So I would ask because it sounds like you're you've got a public records request. So I would ask that after the meeting, you talk to the board clerk and and give her what it is that you're looking for, so that the district can work on responding to that. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Who is the clerk? Uh, Pardon me. I'm sorry. I got it. I got an answer. 
Okay. You got okay. And then the, the, the gentleman who had a hard time finding the website, is he still in the room? No. Yes. That's no, that was him. Yeah, that, that was him. Same individual. Oh, that's it. Okay, so I just Googled Soledad Community Healthcare District and it should pop right out for you. The problem is we have several sites that still pop up. When you Google, they still pop up. And, and that's it, complication. Yeah, so you can, tr you can try. I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay, so, so I'm going to zoom off now. When you dismiss her, the item says we're going to have a conference with legal counsel anticipating litigation. How can you have a conference with legal counsel if she's not here? Because she's talk. not our legal counsel in this matter. We have a separate legal counsel who will Fact. be. Thank you. That, that's great. Correct. Thank you. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Let me know when you want. Want me back on. Thank you, Noel. All right. Sure. We've got, we got okay. some little information. There's a lot of questions. Yeah, we have several legal counsels. She's only one of them. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll ask this real quick. Because it's there's no conflict of interest because of employee family no it's the conflict comes when you're doing the budget oh okay. and because they're specifically approving certain budgetary line items that pertain to their um, conflict oh, okay. and because we did not approve a budget today there is no conflict okay and, and you know for example maggie's daughter yep and that's why and that conflict. hasn't been observed yet and it hasn't been uh, council still wants their opportunity to review that and determine if that's even a conflict oh okay. so that hasn't been done okay. yeah did you guys take any action or no, no action. just information? Yeah, um, management had asked me to address the board specifically to explain a resolution that we're putting in front of you uh, for this meeting. And what I would like to do is basically, I, I want to be very respectful of your time. I know you're a busy board, you have a lot of business to cover. So what I would ask that be done is um, if uh, maybe Sophie or someone can arrange to uh, supplement or put in front of you the revised resolution so you can maybe glance at it while I'm talking. Yes, we have, we have a copy of that, Jim. Okay, so it's the one that's got the yellow highlights in it? Yes, correct. Okay, very good, thank you. So uh, for the board, uh, my name is Jeff Chang. I'm a partner in the law firm of Best Best and Krieger. We provide uh, general outside counsel to the district and I, in particular, am a 40-year employee benefits specialist at the firm, probably one of the most senior members in terms of doing retirement plan work. Um, from time to time, the district and management consult with me on retirement plan issues. And I, I heard, overheard you referring to the 403B plan, and I guess I was the person responsible for analyzing the problems with that plan. And I can give you a little bit of good news in the sense that I can tell you that after about a year or so of sitting with the IRS uh, in a rather lengthy uh, mail queue, they have reviewed your 403B submission that we submitted back in December of 2021. It's been over a year. And my understanding is they're in the process of approving uh, our request for a compliance statement. Um, I've talked to their IRS reviewer, and they're just basically uh, closing up the case and sending it up the ladder for managerial review. So I'm very encouraged about the status, and it looks like you know they're they're letting us quote fix and preserve the tax status of the frozen 403b plan, as we had discussed uh, over a year ago, and the board approved. So that's good news. Any questions about that right now? So to understand that the 403B froze, everything now is in a 457B, but they still have their 403B that they had before, and that's what we're yeah. hoping to preserve. Is that correct? Yes, good, good point. So, so the intention and the plan was to wait until the IRS finishes this process, that it is finishing up. It'll probably take another maybe a couple of weeks or a month before we get the so-called compliance statement from them. But once we get that blessing from them, then I would feel very comfortable uh, advising the district that if it wants to then, say, terminate the 403B plan and allow participants to combine their accounts with their 457 plan or in some cases with a 401A plan, they could do that to consolidate their retirement savings. Thank you. That makes sense. And I think that's been the plan all along 
is that we didn't want the district, which is a small employer, we didn't want the district to have to administer three plans. And so that's why we're suggesting that we, we after we get the compliance statement, maybe we, we whittle it down to two, if that makes sense. Okay? Thank you. That, that totally makes sense. Okay. The form so, seven B is the plan that we have the issue with right now. No. Yes. Yes. Oh yes. So let me turn to Thank the you. subject of the uh, proposed resolution that you have in front of you. As highlighted, it's slightly revised, not in a major way, and I'll, and I'll address those revisions in a second. Basically, there are three things in this resolution, and I'll address them in order of importance to you as decision makers, and I'll also offer, you know, if you have any questions about anything I'm saying, you can certainly interrupt me and ask questions as we go, because I want to make sure you understand it as we go. So the first and the most important thing in this resolution, um, assuming that you're reviewing it now or have reviewed it, is the correction of the 457 plan. And what needs to be corrected is the fact that uh, due to exigent uh, financial conditions that existed a little while back, uh, management, after informing certain members of the board, decided to suspend matching contributions to the 457 plan. And that was done after notice to employees. It was done effective January 1 of this year, 2023. And so the district has not been making matching contributions to the 457 plan since that time. Um, I've only become aware of this action, uh, which is fairly serious, but I, I, I only became aware of it about a week or two ago, and I've been working with management to understand kind of what went on and how it's been documented. And basically what we've determined, what I've determined, is that because of the way that plan is written, 457 plan is written, the district should not suspend matching contributions unless until the plan is first amended. Okay, and so it's really a documentation issue. It is not a question of whether the district can suspend matches if it wants to. It's just that the document has to be changed before it can. You know, it's kind of like you gotta take the parking brake off before you can drive off, you know? There's a step involved there. And so what this resolution says, in essence, at least as to the 457 plan, is it says the district suspended uh, matching contributions as of January. The district shouldn't have done that until it amended the plan. And it's basically getting authorization from the board to basically fix this problem. And, and the way the problem gets fixed very quickly is that because we suspended contributions at a time we could not. The district will have to make up for those matching contributions back to January, number one. It'll have to put in a little bit, very little, of lost earnings. You know, as you know, the stock markets and investments haven't done very well. And then, as part of this resolution, uh, management is asking for authority to properly amend the 457 plan so that we can temporarily suspend matches um, until such time as as management and the board decides it wants to resume them for you know that, for budgetary reasons. And so basically that would be the correction of what's going on with the 457 plan and would ultimately ultimately allow the district to temporarily uh, suspend matching contributions until management and the board decide otherwise. Do you folks have any questions about that aspect of it or what I Put in the resolution. So it's three steps. Yes. Put it back, amend, and then actually take action to stop. That's right. That's right. And and again, the, the district and the board will have authority, and management will be talking to you about whether and when you know you can and should resume making matching contributions. I mean, those are financial considerations and budgetary considerations that are beyond me. But obviously, I think you folks are much better informed about that, those aspects than I am. I'm just basically taking my cue that management has made a determination that that needs to be done, okay? And it can be done, it's just the way it was done was maybe not correct, okay? I have, I have a question. Um, yes? If it's, if it's reenacted or whatever, 
do we have to make it retroactive, the earning, you know, the matching, and that's what you do? We would make it retroactive? Yes. Um, like he says, it's a process. So okay. in order to correct the process, then you would have to do that. Maybe talk a little bit about, Jeff, the um, overpayments that we're analyzing right now. Yeah, so, so basically, um, I mean, the way of correcting these plans is if, again, if we determine and analyze that the, that the match should have been made, okay, since January 1, then we basically have around seven pay periods or so that are involved where the employees may have put money in, but they didn't get matched. And so let's just say the match that was lost is a couple of thousand dollars. You know, I mean, we've looked at those amounts, and they're not, they're not huge amounts, but they're, you know, a couple of thousand dollars. And the point is, is that those matches, had they been made, would have been earning interest or would have grown according to participants' investments in the plan. And so there is a mechanism uh, through the IRS to correct the fact that people lost out on those earnings. You know, to make them whole, we would want to give them the match plus the time value of the money, right? Mm -hmm. When it wasn't in the plan. What and so we would need to have a little bit more money in there. So that's the that's basically the process. There's a there's a calculator that we can use for crediting, you know, calculating and crediting earnings. I guess what I'm referring to, Jeff, yeah. pardon me. Um, what I'm referring to, Jeff, is we overpaid the employees. And that's the, the documentation that we're getting to you right now is we're, we're doing that calculation. So there was a time frame that we overpaid our employees. When? Uh, during this time. So we've overpaid them. In 22? At 21? This is recent. This is oh, just January January January. 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 We stopped making We stopped making matching contributions. How does that get them overpaid? Uh, because there was a period of time that we overpaid them their matching contributions. And oh. that's what, so yeah. we made the matching contributions that we weren't supposed to make? Above and beyond. Uh, and so we're doing the calculations. We were supposed to get $100 and we gave them $110, yeah. for example. And sometimes it was double. Yeah. So we're doing the math right now. Yeah. How does that apply to the contributions we stopped giving? I'm talking two different things. You want to explain that? Yeah, so, so I mean, the basic concept is that the district needs to follow the terms of its plans. Mm -hmm. And so if the plans say that you contribute this amount of a match, if you over-contribute, then there is a mechanism whereby you can get credit for those over-contributions, mm -hmm. and you can offset them against under-contributions. So when, over, when did we over-contribute? I thought we stopped contributing was the problem. Um, so this plan's been in effect, has it been about a year now, Jeff, I think, now? Yes. So it's been about that period of time. So in 2022, we made some over-contributions. Um, I don't want to say exact, though. Approximately. Approximate. A year, approximately a year. And then in January 1st, when we stopped making contributions, we under-contributed. So there's two factors we have to fix. Is that what you're saying? Uh, there's two factors we have to consider, yes. If all this talks about is that we stopped contributing January 1st. It, it's, it's dealing with that, correct. Yeah. It's going to get it all corrected for us. Mm -hmm. so we're going to correct the 457 plan, um, as indicated. The, the reference to the 401A plan is that the 401A plan, when it was established at the beginning of 2022, contained language in it that it should not have contained. And so uh, management brought that up to the record keeper nationwide service provider nationwide and between the two of them they did a real quick and dirty kind of amendment they crossed lines out and things like that and um, i just spoke to the folks at nationwide today and by the way they recognized that that kind of amendment although it's not their typical protocol in the way they like to do things they all recognized that it was effective to fix that plan and so the highlighted language in the resolution is merely an add-on that, that I put in there, just basically saying that when we get a chance, we're going to work with Nationwide to correct the language in the 401A plan so that it conforms to their normal best practices. So it, it's not going to change anything. It's just going to confirm what, what management has already done and, and Nationwide recognizes. So that's really a minor issue. Uh, okay? I, excuse me. I was wondering... Yes. What percentage would the, the people have received on their money? What percentage interest 
that they have received? So what, what there is uh, for this purpose is there is a thing called the, uh, it's actually called uh, the De Department of Labor Calculator. And it is a online calculator that the United States Department of Labor uses for employers who either neglect to or inadvertently uh, or purposefully deposit monies late into these 401 type K plans. And so what it is, it's a variable rate of interest determined by the Department of Labor, which they, be, they view as an adequate proxy for making people whole. So it varies, but it's generally speaking a, you know, a, a how can I say, a balanced market rate, you know, probably in the, you know, probably somewhere between maybe 2 and 5% right now. Something like that. I mean, I, I don't know the exact number. We would have to actually go into the calculator to, to determine that. But it's a, it's a number that is, quote, a rate that is blessed by the Department of Labor and used for this purpose, that is correcting late deposits of money. So, okay? I understand the 403B and then we had to change the 457. How, is there a certain class of employee who uses the 401A or who's got the 401A? Is that so the 401A is, it is available to, to all employees. The problem um, and is also used for uh, certain executive compensation purposes. The problem with the 401A is when it was established, there was a miscommunication uh, between management and the provider nationwide. And we ended up putting in a, uh, a mandatory match in the 401A plan document when you also had a mandatory match in the 457. And there's clearly no intention to have a mandatory match in both plans. The intention was to have it in one plan or the other, okay? And so ultimately, you know, CEO decided, and it was decided that the match should be in the 457 plan and not in the 401A plan. And so that was communicated to Nationwide. And I think they were being a little bit lazy on their side. So what they did is they crossed out some words and they shipped it over to your CEO, and she initialed those changes. And then she sent them back to them. That is a form of amendment, but it's kind of sloppy. You know what I mean? It's like crossing out sections of a lease or a mortgage or something mm -hmm. and saying it's good, you know? Thank you. So that's all we're doing. We're just going to clean that up. That answers my questions on those things. OK. The third item that's in your resolution mentions designation of plan administrator. And this is something that I feel very uh, strongly about, is that I noticed that in a lot of um, agencies, uh, public agencies, that the, the tendency is for, to appoint the quote, employer, the whole employer, as being responsible for the retirement plans. You're, the employer is designated as the, what's called a plan administrator of all your plans. The problem with that designation is that it does not provide for any real accountability and real, um, if you will, authority in terms of who's going to act on behalf of the employer and who's going to really own and take, take care of your plans. And, and generally what the law says is without a more specific designation, you, the board, are the plan administrator. And the problem I have with that is that you only meet periodically and you are a policy um, body, and you really don't have a chance to work with the plans and the various advisors and record keepers and consultants on a regular daily basis. It's just not well suited to your frequency of meeting and your policy-based, if you will, roles vis-a-vis -vis the district. So my recommendation, my strong recommendation, is that the board designate the CEO and the human resources manager as co-plan administrators, you know, specifically, so that they know that they are to take care of these plans and, if you will, oversee them and make sure they're properly operated on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. I mean, that is the role of the plan administrator, is to, if, is to oversee the care and feeding of these plans on a daily, in-and-out basis. And again, that's not well suited for a board. So I've talked to, I've talked to uh, the CEO and your HR manager. They understand they're taking on fiduciary responsibilities. 
and I think they're better suited. And, and, and obviously, they're close to the other aspects of payroll and all of that, you know. So that's what I'm recommending. And that way, once they're appointed, uh, assuming that the board needs to, then they can deal with your other consultants and advisors appropriately to make sure that these plans get serviced properly. Because I think all of this, all of these problems, point a little bit to a lack of proper servicing and proper communication between the district, its management, and your service providers. That is, the plan's investment advisors and record keepers. And I would really like to give management more authority and control over dealing with selecting and monitoring these advisors. Because again, the board just is not in a position to do that. Any questions about that? It will also take some responsibility off your shoulders. Because I hate to have a participant come to a, a board meeting and say, you know, how come we're invested in these kinds of things? And then the board, you know, basically doesn't really understand or, you know, how the plans are currently operating. Well, thank you, Jeff. Any questions of Jeff? That's cool. Okay, so. Yeah, that's, so my, my role was just to explain the resolution. I assume that it'll be brought forth or, or moved accordingly to your agenda. Any other questions? So just because the plan administrators or the, the board is still fiduciarily responsible to make sure they're asking the right questions and that they're looking at that, and the administrator doesn't say, I'm going to stop making contributions, the board has to say, you know, we need to stop making contributions, and then you can yeah, the authority. Yeah, your point's well taken. So there are certain things that we call set more responsibilities, like whether to have a plan, whether to change the plan, whether to stop making contributions, when to start them, that are reserved to the board. Okay, yeah, those are real you. fundamental amendment issues. But, okay, maintaining the plan, and whether you're gonna use the Chevron dealer or Midas or whatever, Tire Pros, to maintain your plan, that would devolve to the plan administrators. And I think that's appropriate because- That makes sense, thank you. That, is very, that is very, very clear, and thank you very much. That does okay. make sense. Okay. okay, so uh, we're going to take board action. Uh, approve uh, resolution 2023-02, correction of the 457B plan and designation of new plan administrator. Motion? I don't think we're ready to approve the whole plan, but I think we've got some facts. Uh, we obviously, by law, we have to put that money back and fix the contribution we took out. And we need to establish the plan administrator, but at least according to minutes, when I was here and before I was here, the board has never discussed stopping contributions. I even came to a meeting and said, we're going to stop making contributions. At least it wasn't in the minutes of a board meeting. I didn't come to a meeting. That's right. So the board did not decide to stop making contributions, mm -hmm. and that's something we need to talk about because right now the employees not getting their contributions. The board is accountable to those people because they didn't get their contributions because the board has to authorize stopping making those payments. And the board didn't even know it until you announced we were stopping them. And now we realize they were stopped improperly. So we don't have a choice but to put the money back and to give a plan administrator. Now we need to look at the finances and the budget and say, wow, should we stop those contributions? We've never had that discussion. We need to take action if we want to correct and put this back into place. And I think that's what this what he's asking for today. So okay. He's I'm, giving us that ability. I thought I read it talked about the fact it gave it gave authority to stop the contributions in the future. And I no. I I think we need to put the money back and we need to amend it to give the authority to, to it and assign the plan administrators, but we have to just take separate action to stop the contribution. Is that I think first we have to get we have to designate the administrator. Then we address those issues that you think of. Is that right? But yeah. it, there's several things. That's why I'm making sure that this resolution does a lot of things. I, I was looking for that IRS employee okay. compliance. So um, is it is it never shall that I'm talking to? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, okay. I think, and, and again, I'm just making a, a suggestion to the board that you might consider um, is, is I set this up as a plan of action with steps 
so that it could be broken into its components. And I believe if you refer to the um, item number two under the plan of action. Yes. I think it's on the same page, second page. Item number two says, in order to permit the district to temporarily suspend the making of employer contributions, um, CEO and HR with the assistance of counsel be authorized and directed to amend the plan as necessary to provide for a temporary suspension of employer matching contributions until further action is taken to reinstitute such contributions. If the board is not willing to authorize a new suspension of contributions, you know, then we can take that out or you can we can recommend a, an amendment to the resolution. The remainder of the resolution would allow us to fix the the issues that, that have already occurred, which is to restore restore the matching contributions and earnings. But but what that would mean is is that you know depending on how you all want to handle this, is that if it is financially either appropriate or necessary to have suspended these contributions, the board will have to deal with that. You know, at a we don't know it's financially necessary. We haven't had a, we haven't had a budget item to compare. We just said we're losing money. We need to make these payments stop, and we have it now evaluated. The board hasn't discussed it. It was done, and that's what I'm saying. The board the board's not ready to suspend that yet because the board hasn't even talked about it before. But I do I do believe we need to fix it. So I, I move we approve this minus paragraph two. Is that how we striking paragraph two? Which if that's what the board wants well, to I'm, do. I'm saying if that's if I said if I made that recommendation, that would fix the plan, get the administrators, and in the future we could take action and now we have a way to be able to suspend. That is that's correct. No, no, I do that. Right? That's but that's saying we're gonna we're gonna suspend until we take further action. And I'm saying we never authorized suspending to begin with. I thought we did. We didn't. The CEO made a decision to suspend and said, hey, we're going to stop making these payments. It was never discussed at a board meeting. So the board never discussed the impact on the employees and on our budget and plans to make that suspension. And that's our responsibility to oversee and, and approve those decisions. We never talked about it. So we did, it didn't come to the board. Um, it did, it did um, go past the president of the board. He still won so, five votes. He's not so, the decision maker. Um, that's where that's where it stood. It was. Uh, well, did did the CEO have the direction to make that decision? No, she. The CEO talked to the chairman of the board and said, "Oh, we have to do this," and they did that. But that's one of five so, votes. So five votes didn't vote on suspending the contribution. But I think that the decision was made as the best financial reasons. Right? It, it, it doesn't matter. It was made. And so now if it's a wrong decision, we made the wrong decision if we authorize it because we're responsible. You're, 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 I, you're responsible. I, yes, sir. If I can just mention, I, I just want to clarify, I mean, the technical aspect of it. I'm not disagreeing that the board has some authority over this. However, the board can also, you know, the, the, the resolution of this particular issue is not, is not only one way. I think you have some options. The, the first option is to say the board does not approve the suspension, okay, the temporary suspension of the match. You can do that. I think another option that the board has, however, is the board at this point can recognize a decision, albeit made by, by management, by senior management, under exigent circumstances, and you can basically ratify the suspension, and, and, and we can approve the, you know, you can basically approve the suspension, um, either as was done or, or, you know, on an ongoing basis. But in any event, the point is, is that I, I don't think it's, it's it, that you have an obligation to, to necessarily continue to match into the future, okay? I mean, I think that's a, that's a third option, I suppose. Agreed. It's a financial decision, and until we look at numbers and make an evaluation, we haven't even had a budget to look at to compare. We just said, money's going out, let's make, stop that contribution. Maybe we should make it a cut someplace else, is my point, before we start taking benefits from employees without discussing it. And when you take an employee benefit, and the board doesn't vote on it, that's a problem. And the board did not vote to take the employee benefit away. 
we have this is the first time we really discussed it other than saying we did it. So I, I would like to I would like the resolution to put the money back, get the plan administrators, and give the authority to make changes, and we need it at a future time to discuss whether we should suspend payments at all or not. That's my point. I, I'm not in favor of suspending the funds yet because we haven't evaluated it, but we do need to fix everything else. And that was one of the options you gave. Um, is, is he able to vote on this? Because no, he has it's, a, it's the will of the board. So the she's board calling board. for board action. He's, he's the will of the board. Yeah, well, how do we, uh, yeah. So vote. Oh. Call for a, a motion. Uh, I, I move we approve this resolution with the exception of authorizing suspending the contributions now. So that's an option. Does anyone second that motion? Well, what does the CEO recommend? Either need to get a second or it's got a tie before we can talk about it. I thought we could talk about it. it, it it's, not, it's, not, it's not an active item until a motion is put. I move oh, if, you made the if somebody so seconds it. If nobody talk, seconds in the no discussion, then you can, you can then make your own motion to approve as presented. Anybody have a second? Um, I'm not sure about uh, suspending the, <clears throat> the second uh, statement. You're wanting to leave it in? Yeah. I, yeah. No. Okay, so then. Um, so that motion fails. So fails somebody else has for a motion to okay. approve as presented. They have a motion to approve as presented, resolution 2023-02. I will be uh, accept resolution to 2023-2. Two. Two. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay. Uh, roll call. Do I have a second? Mm, Maggie. Yes. Rosemary. Yes. Ann. Yes. And Michael. No. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate Thank your time you. and Thank your Jeff. explanation. That's very yes, sir, thank you very much. And I, I need to log off that too. Yes. Sorry, Ida. No problem. Thank you, Noelle. Well, have a great rest of your evening. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we move on to foundation report. Uh, Rosemary. Okay. Um, Jamie has been doing a very good job. She got started early on our uh, fundraiser. Our present fundraiser is uh, the quilt. And this time we did something different, where she sent out tickets with the letters uh, telling about the quilt and showing pictures of the two quilts. And um, so she's already been receiving income, and I think she's received something like uh, uh, $3,200 yeah. already. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, a real good start to that, which will be drawn for on uh, Mother's Day. And um, anyway, we uh, spent money, sent money from the foundation to pay for the, um, the no. mammogram machine. Uh, my fingers are out here. Uh, Six thousand. Oh no. Uh, oh, twenty-six thousand dollars. Twenty-six thousand five hundred dollars mm -hmm. was uh, sent from the foundation to the. Uh, regular fund here to help pay for the mammogram machine. And uh, this year was something new and different where we joined the Monterey County, what's it called? We, the, Monterey County Gifts. Monterey County Gifts. And we received an extra 6500 Everybody is adjusted to, the, to your new sleeping uh, patterns now. And I hope everyone's staying dry. It's been raining. And uh, it looks like this next week we're going to enjoy some sun, some vitamin D. So I'm glad to see that the sun is out. I'm happy to report and to confirm that we, on March 1st, we got confirmation of our final approval of our Oshbar project. If you guys remember, that was a project for the um, uh, the uh, power outage that was caused through that pg &E event. <clears throat> and this now allows us to go and get our insurance reimbursement um, and that is roughly or nearly around 184000 I just want to compliment Ray, our maintenance supervisor, for just seeing this project through. 
it took a lot of time and energy uh, making sure that everything was done uh, appropriately. So, um, yeah, we will expect to see uh, that coming um, here pretty soon. Um, what else? Eden Valley. So we talked about it a little bit already. Um, and Eden Valley, uh, CDPH um, did visit our uh, facility. What was that? Uh, CDPH. What is that? Uh, that is the California Department of Public Health. Oh, okay. And they'll um, visit uh, an inquiry um, and visit uh, for, for um, several reasons. And they are they are examining um, us and making sure we have good quality care, food, and medication. Um, that is still under review and observation. Um, and they will regulate, if not often, will come in to make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. They do that once a year? They do that as often as they need to. Oh. Yeah. Um, and they come, you know, anytime. A surprise, they, they don't announce it, they just show up. Um, COVID. Uh, we did have some um, positive staff members um, and some positive um, residents in the month of February. So as we may all think that COVID is over, um, it's still around. Um, and, and that puts strains on the staff and it puts strains on staffing in general, um, which means that we have to rely on um, sometimes as much as we don't want to on the agency staffing, um, which can be very expensive if you guys can recall. Um, we are, are, are our census, uh, we were recording that earlier, it's about 52 with about um, 27 um, uh, patients in, in, uh, that are Medi Medicare. Referrals, so we've received 16 admins from Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital, one from Natividad, one from Chomp, one from UCSF, and a total of 19. Events that we've celebrated, uh, we've celebrated our Valentine's Day barbecue in February, we've done scavenger hunts, uh, we've done spin to win Fridays, no missing punches, all personnel will win, we've done monthly raffles and staff appreciation days um, at Eden Valley. Oh, can I ask you, yes. is Cecilia gone? She is, yes. So um, who's now in her place is um, uh, Jeanette. Is she up? And has she already been on staff? Yes, she came in as soon as um, Sylvia. And Sylvia's still here training her. So she oh. comes in uh, periodically to train her. Um, what else? Um, moving on, any questions on that before I move on? Okay. Uh, the clinic. Um, so um, they celebrated St. Patrick's Day with green bagels. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty interesting uh, day for them. But they had lots of fun and enjoyed that. Uh, if you guys recall, back in, um, in December, uh, in, in January, I reported that we launched the um, Chronic Care Management Program. And this program is connected to uh, a uh, ability for us to do one-on-ones with patients, communicate with them via over, let's say, uh, a mobile device um, or an email. And these, um, th these are specifically for Medicare patients. And um, we have enrolled, um, since we started the program in December, over 350 patients to the program. Um, so there's a lot of need um, from our um, uh, patient population on that. Phone systems. As you guys know, phone systems has been a topic of conversation uh, for a while now. And so what we've done is that we modified the phone system. So now, if you see the screens of the, um, uh, of the, of the front office staff who's answering the phone, they now have what is called a heart. So what happens is that they can uh, receive up to 12, um, uh, 12 uh, calls at one time, and then they can they can put them on a part. Um, and they, and they, what, what that does is the phones uh, that have are, are coming in, uh, they can accept more calls that are coming in, and then the, the person who is um, answering the call and and there's a part, they can now answer that call. Whereas in the past, if you put it on hold on your phone, nobody else can see it. Now everybody else can see it. In addition to that, we, uh, we are now, we've now added uh, voicemails, which allow the staff to capture any missed calls and they're returned the same day. Usually, honestly, they're, they're, they're being returned within a couple of hours. 
that's all quickly. Um, is that a software change? Are we getting new equipment change? Or how do we implement those changes? So just reprogram what we had to do that? Correct. So it's reprogramming of the equipment. That's good. Reutilizing is awesome. Um, what else have we done? Uh, schedule modification. So we we um, had a, um, uh, it, it was added about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. Uh, they changed the, the scheduling time frame to about 20 minutes. That was very problematic um, because it didn't allow for um, proper um, a scheduling of complex um, patients to just general patients. Um, so um, what um, they did and have done at the clinics is that they're now offering 15 minute and 30 minute appointments to our patients and built the schedule utilizing more patients daily with a smoother flow for providers and providers are appreciating that. We've also added, if you walk into our lobby, we, we, we um, uh, 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 changed things around the lobby and pulled back some of the benches to get more room for people who are walking in because our lines are very long in the mornings, especially early in the mornings. And so we pulled those back, but what, what, what they also have done is that if you walk in and to the clinic and you look off to your right, there's this whiteboard. And on the whiteboard, it has every single provider. And, and what that allows for is for patients to know how long their wait's gonna be. Um, because there's sometimes that providers um, uh, may be running late, and this assists with um, giving transparency to our patients. And, um, you know, they'll show if they're on time, they'll show if they're 15 minutes late, they'll show if they're 30 minutes late. Um, so providers um, appreciate it, um, and they, they, it's kind of even like a, for them it's, it's they want to be on that board and want to show that they're on time. And I did a survey, I was sitting in the lobby and I asked a um, patient what did they thought of the board. And it was a couple and they were there for their daughter. And the, the, the wife says, I really like it because then I know if I have a doctor's appointment somewhere else or I have somewhere to go, I know that my provider's running late. Yeah. And uh, the gentleman said, oh, it's like going to the court. They tell you if they're on track or on time. Um, but so that's now uh, up, up there um, along with the lobby makeover. Uh, patient scene, you guys do have your report. Um, and Match um, did ask us to include that average per patient volume uh, per provider. Um, so we went ahead and did that just to help make more sense of this report. So you still have and the, the, the uh, total for each doctor, but now you have that average, right? So you're, you're getting to see the average uh, number of uh, visits that they have per provider. So you, you get to see that. Um, and in March, it was roughly about 19. We didn't have any COVID patients and staff, um, or didn't have any staff with COVID. Um, what else? Average, um, average per day. That's if you work it's five average days. Average patient per day. I understand what that is. My question is, you take a month, and you divide that month I count by 30, or? You do not. That's because some of these people work three days and 12 hours, right. and some of them work five days and eight hours, and some right. of them work 10 hours. The last time you told me the 10 hour people, 8 hour people, all come and leave at the same time, which doesn't make sense. Yeah, it didn't make sense. Okay. So yeah. these averages are based on the number of hours out of the month. It's, no. cal it's calculated. No. They're based on the um, number of days that the person worked in the month divided by the number of visits that they had, which becomes with the average. So if you're a 10 hour per day person, you shouldn't see more patients than an 8 hour per day person. Uh, technically, that is correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you only have two of those, and that's Amy and Oscar. Right. So you can take a look at their patterns. Okay? Yeah. All righty. And then um, coming soon is a Foundation Labs enhancement. Uh, that's a new lab in town. Uh, that will be in addition to what we currently have is LabCorp. And why is that important is because um, that is a local um, opportunity for our patients to get uh, direct access um, to uh, labs here in our community. And then um, we, in order to give more time for the providers um, to um, uh, want to chart or take their lunches uh, appropriately and on time, and every, all the other staff, um, the um, clinic will be um, uh, closing during their lunch hour from 12 to 1. And the Women's Center's been doing it already for some time. 
Okay. So they're answering the phone, right? That's correct. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're answering the phones will continue happening. Are you still having the monthly meetings with the staff? We do. We have various ones. So we have um, providers here at Ian Valley. It's daily um, with their staff because you know they have patient living here and patient care. Yeah. Um, at um, the clinic, um, it goes. It depends on the you know providers, MAs, front office. So there's very there's very uh, issues that we need. Did you share with them the February numbers, the cash numbers? The I did. did. Okay. Yes. And then uh, you know the staff. That was a real concern with the, the staff hours. Those are slowly coming back for the employees. Uh, we have about ten in the whole company. Yeah. So we've made a, a definitely turnaround, and that was the. That was always the plan right. that we put in place. And that's been, they've been aware of that. Yes, correct. Yeah, they've been coming back slowly. And starting uh, April 1st, you will now have uh, the billing uh, team and staff uh, coming back to full time. Yeah. Hopefully, we won't have to go back. How about the flex day? That, that yeah. is still, that is what she's talking about. So the flex day holiday has been removed. I'm sorry? You, what? When, you, when you did the retirement thing, you announced that the flex day is now gone. That's that, not what we're talking about. I, she's, she's asking about something different. And, and, and I thought she was done. I was asking something different also about oh, the flex oh, day. Oh, no. That, that still has not been put back into effect. That, that's actually been um, uh, removed as a option right now. Out of the employee manual. Out of the employee manual. That is correct. Uh, that is being addressed with um, our attorney. And she's reviewing all of those changes. Well, how can you take that day away out of the manual if the manual's not approved yet? Um, because there was a communication in, and uh, to the staff informing them appropriately uh, that the change would make an appropriate. Did the time. board decide to cancel that holiday? Um, it, it, it wasn't a board action. Okay. Yeah. An employee benefit should be a board action. Uh, that particular one was not. We, we can certainly discuss that further if you wish. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. All right. The clinic, along with um, uh, Julia Schnell, nutrition service partner, uh, she partnered with Mintana Wildlife Society uh, to invite outside nature activities to 13 kids in our community. So we partnered up with um, Soledad um, High School to let us provide the room so that we can bring the parents in to explain. Um, these are 13 children from the ages of 8 to 12. Um, they will also um, provide a 12-week program, and so they'll be referred to that. Um, it's, it's a free day of adventures. They also offer that. And all day activities such as whale watching, kayaking, and going to the Monterey Bay Aquarium. So we, we partnered um, for, uh, with them uh, to do that and bring that to our community and to our patients uh, with the Ventana Wildlife Society. So this is our patients? That are, our, our, yes, our are patients. Part of the program? Uh, we're recommending uh, 13 patients um, from the ages of 8 to 12. Yeah, it's a great event. It's a great, it's a great um, opportunity. Um, so um, just lastly, wrapping up on partnerships um, for the month. Um, I have been invited, I was I have been invited to join the SOLDA Unified School District Safety Committee, where we will focus on emergency crisis response, including active shooter response, mm -hmm. physical safety, mental health and wellness, and school site safety. Um, haven't joined the meeting yet, but we'll be doing that. You have a question? No. Okay. Um, we've already um, talked about this before, but the Associated California Healthcare Districts visited and toured our campus. Kathy Martin, CEO, and Sarah Bridge um, from Advocacy were here. Um, and they loved our campus, never have been, and really enjoyed the tour. So we took them on that tour. Um, I also attended the Monterey County Special Economic Development Committee meeting. As you guys know, I'm a, I'm a, a committee member of that as well. Um, we right now they're um, doing a survey and I was part of the survey and they're focusing on um, aspects and, and um, we, we talked about health um, in my example but they're focusing on aspects of what we can improve on um, economically um, in our community in our county and there will be a whole survey printed out once it's all completed I was invited by the City of Soledad to participate in the City's Parks and Recreation Master Plan for development, use, and maintenance of parks and recreational spaces across our city. And so um, that is, uh, they, they do this on a periodic basis, and there's actually, it's open uh, to the community. I can't find it right here um, quickly, but 
Um, it's open to our community, so if anyone is interested, um, you can go to the city website or the fund it. Um, so um, you can go to our city website and find that as well. Yeah. Um, let's see. And uh, uh, I convened a meeting with uh, Michael Castro, Director of Community Initiative for Community Foundation for Monterey County, and Al Pope team from Stanford. Stephen, and I can't pronounce his name, is uh, the uh, Chief Clinic Professor and Director of Stanford Center for Youth, Mental Health, and Wellness. He's the Associate Chair of Community Engagement, Department for Psychiatry and Behavior Sciences. I, I convened a group of people together, uh, these folks including the school district, unfortunately weren't able to come, to discuss ALCO. ALCO is an integrated mental health center for youth of ages 12 to 25 to access support to mental health, physical health, substance abuse, peer support, family support, education, and employment. So this is one of many discussions in this collaborative um, that will continue um, monitoring and looking forward and I'll, I'll, I'll get reports as they become available. Um, I also was um, invited to a Spanish radio station, KGE Hoya, 1570. Um, it, this was all done in Spanish to showcase our district, Eden Valley, the clinic, and the Women's Center and staff. It was one hour. It was a Facebook Live along with uh, a live um, to our Spanish-speaking community. On the radio. On the radio, all in Spanish. Now I have to tell you how to practice my Spanish a little bit, especially <laughs> the medical terms. It was like a podcast. Yeah, yeah. And it was a lot of fun. Um, we, uh, you know, talked about, you know, the district, Eden Valley, the clinic, the Women's Center, and all of our staff that work here. Nice. Um, the HR team has been attending lots of career days, but they most recently attended the Main Street Middle School um, uh, career day um, so that the uh, students can explore various career opportunities in health care. Um, and I attended the board meeting for ACHD um, and, uh, this month, and that's all I have. Oh, I uh, did what are those one. initials? I'm sorry, I can't oh, keep up with no all those initials. No worries, yeah. Association of California Healthcare Districts. Where was that? No. Sacramento. Yeah. And last but not least, um, importantly, I leave this so you guys can remember, um, we do have some, um, um, uh, years of service to celebrate. Uh, Maribel Santa Cruz, she's a medical assistant um, that works with our OBGYN in the month of March. She celebrated one year with us. We have Nena uh, Gureva, she's a CNA here at Eden Valley. She celebrated one year of service with us in March. In February, we have Erica Leon, medical records, who celebrated 15 years of service with us. And we have Blasso Rancho. Um, Albion uh, here at Eden Valley who celebrated five years of service with us. We have uh, Blanca Reyes, a medical assistant who celebrated five years of service with us. And then our employee of the month for January is Stephanie Estrada. Um, and we're still working on uh, uh, February and March. And we have added some new team members. And, and, and um, again, I invite you just to introduce yourself if you see somebody in the hallways that you don't recognize. Uh, but we have added team members, um, specifically more here at Eden Valley, um, as, as a need um, comes up. You know, did you ever see in the newspapers where, like, uh, Trump and SVMH, and they have, they have the different pictures of the years of service? Yeah. You know, if, if we're going to do that with the providers, that'd be kind of nice. That'd be good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's a great that idea. That might be a nice thing to do with the years of service. <coughs> and then the other thing is, is <coughs> on another note, so like, I listened to, I went to the Solid at High School's uh, concert, their band concert, and it, it was in conjunction with the Monterey County Pops, and it was a, it was a nice concert. Oh, that you were the one yeah, yeah, and you know, I don't know if you reach out to the high school, maybe the band <coughs> put on a performance in the garden. We are on it, oh. and we're already doing that, and our activities coordinator is working on that right now. Oh, that'd be nice. Especially now that we're going into our summer months. Yeah, yeah. I'd like yeah. to know I'll come to that one too. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And that can, any any questions? Yeah. That concludes my report. I just, if you were going to talk about, I thought Greg was going to bring up that we kind of talked a little bit about the letter that the providers wrote back in November that we've never received. But Dr. Jackson emailed to, to us right before the last board meeting, and I understand that we're researching that letter 
and the board has never officially received that letter from the providers. It's not what they said, it's that they've addressed an issue back in November, and we haven't even accepted the fact that the provider had an issue to talk about. So well, that's, that's a person that's personnel. No, it's yeah. not a personnel and issue. We'll deal with yes, it. It's a closed session. But you can, it's you not can a closed session, session yet now. I, I at least want this in the minutes. The, Dr. Jackson emailed all of us last month. And here's your copy. That Dr. Jackson emailed everybody. That's, and Dr. Jackson sent this letter. We can address and, it with our attorney, but that's what's been suggested. So That's uh, why I want all the board members to have a copy. If they don't want to take it, they don't have to. But that's yeah. all they'd like. She yeah. delivered them to us personally. And, and, but, yeah, but, so but we I, have them. But yeah. I asked, why is it not the minutes of the meeting? It was said because we never received them. And that's baloney. We received them, therefore it should be addressed by the board. The board should talk about that. But how do we deal with personnel matters at the board, Max? The fact that the, the providers have some problems is something. Then, how do we deal then with schedule personnel? a special meeting. This Correct. has been since November, okay. and when I asked last meeting, I was told we didn't receive a letter, which is baloney. So we can you can make that suggestion, and that thing definitely can go to the board. Okay. Okay. But we need to record right. the minutes that we did receive a letter from Dr. Jackson from the providers. At this moment, that's a personnel matter, so we'll have to it's, address It's a letter. I, I demand that the minutes say we received a letter from the providers. They're not to talk about the letter, but that we received a letter, and we officially received a letter from the providers. It's a fact. We received a letter. Dealing with the letter separately is fine, but we can't ignore it anymore. We need to have a special meeting in two weeks and talk about this because it's been going on since November, and it hasn't even been addressed. That sounds like a good plan. Well, I've been asking that. How do you get things on the meeting agenda? I've been sending emails, and two weeks ago I talked to Mr. Stevens and said to you, and I don't even get an answer in my email, let alone get things on the agenda. How do I get things on the agenda? You make the suggestion to the president. And I did. Okay. Repeated. Well, then he, he and I send a copy to you when I do that. Yep. And okay. he holds that. He and did you send one to the attorney? Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. We're still paying for Would you like to give me an order that I cannot ask questions of the attorney? I, I the attorney writes to letters to Ida. Max, we can relax. We don't uh, have to raise I, our voices. I, I'm sorry, I was feeling attacked. I, I, I will calm There's down. No I just, can, can I speak? I'm, you may. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm going to calm down. I, Please, I reacted, and, and I'm sorry. So, if you want to give me an order that I can't send an email, and I when I email Greg and or Ida, and if I have a question, I ask the attorney, and she doesn't answer me very much. She just she answers. She never really answers the questions anyway. So why bother? Because I think that the questions that I'm asking her about, if they're not addressed, could cost us more money in lawsuits and legal action. It, it, that's what we have an attorney for. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, join this meeting. Uh, and you.